Hi everybody, I'm Pia from Stitches and Scraps. Today I'm going to show you how to make this 12 inch blanket square which is called Convergence. I'll be using some leftover Red Heart with Love yarn which Red Heart had originally sent me for a couple of different projects over the last couple of years. This color is Pewter, this is Boysenberry, and this is Tan. Now in the pattern I've used Pewter as color A, Boysenberry as color B, and Tan as color C. We're going to start with a chain four. One, two, three, four. Now the three chains that are closest to my hook are going to count as my first double crochet. This fourth chain is where I'm going to put all of my stitches for the first row. So this is one double crochet. I'm going to put two more double crochet into that fourth chain from my hook. Now because I don't use a slip knot, my starting chain here acts kind of like a magic loop. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten that. If you prefer to use a magic loop or you prefer to use some other method for starting your work, you can go ahead and do that. Um, I just use the fourth chain like that. So we've got three double crochet into the one chain and that's our first row. For row two, we're going to chain three to start. And if you prefer to use a chainless starting double crochet or some other method of starting a double crochet row, that's perfectly fine as well. I'm using chain three because that's what I put in the pattern. And then I'm going to put one more double crochet in that same first stitch. Now I'm going to chain one and I'm going to put a puff stitch into the next stitch. Now a puff goes like this. Yarn over, insert your hook and pull up a loop pull all the loops up to the same height. Now that is three loops on your hook, right? We're gonna do that four more times, so a total of five times. Yarn over, pull up a loop, that's two. Yarn over, pull up a loop, that's three. Yarn over, pull up a loop, that's four. Yarn over, pull up a loop, that is five times. You should now have 11 loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all 11 loops at once, and then chain one to close. And that's a puff stitch, which is very puffy, which is why it's a puff stitch. Now we're going to chain one again. Remember that chain one was just a close. So we're going to chain one again. And then in this last stitch, we're going to put two double crochets. For row three, we're going to again chain three to start, turn our work. Now this time we're putting another double crochet, a chain one, and then two more double crochet, all in that same first stitch. That's a lot of stitches to go in that same first stitch. Then we're going to skip this stitch and we're going to skip this chain space and we're just going to put a single crochet at the top of the puff. Then we skip the chain space and skip the next stitch and then we're going to put our two double crochet chain one and two double crochet all in that last stitch. There we go, that is row three. For row four, we again chain three to start. Now this time, we only want one double crochet and then a chain space. So this chain three counts as my double crochet. I'm going to do one more chain, so it's chain four, but this fourth chain is gonna count as my chain space. So that's important when we work back into it. So remember that. There's my four chains, and then I'm going to put two more double crochets into that same first stitch. Now I'm going to skip this next stitch and I'm going to put a single crochet in the chain space. Then I skip over two stitches and I come all the way to the center that single crochet I've got there. And in there I'm going to put two double crochets, a chain one, and two more double crochets. Now I'm again going to skip over to the next chain space and in this chain space I'm going to put a single crochet. And then finally I come to my last stitch here where I'm going to do two double crochets, a chain one, and then just one double crochet. 
And that is the end of row four. So for row five, we're going to chain three again. Okay, turn our work. This time I'm going to put three double crochets into that first stitch. So I've already got one with the chain three. So there's two and then three. So total of three double crochets in that first stitch. Now I'm not skipping anything because my chain space is right here, right? So I'm just gonna come right here and do a single crochet. And then I'm gonna skip over to this single crochet. So I'm skipping two stitches and I'm going to do my two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. Then I skip two stitches here and I do a single crochet in that chain one space, skip two more stitches, and again do my two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet into this single crochet that's here. Okay, skip two more stitches. Now remember this last one, this is a double crochet and a chain one space. So first I put a single crochet into that chain one space and then I put three double crochet into that double crochet. And that is the end of row five. Now, if you're making your square all in one color, which is totally cool, you can totally do that, then ignore all the color changes as we go through. I'm using three different colors and I'm going to change colors right here. So actually, before I finish this last stitch, before I do that last pull through, when I just have two loops on my hook, that's when I'm going to bring in my next color to make a nice clean color change and I'm going to close that stitch with the new color. Okay, I can fasten off my gray, my first color, and now I'm ready to work with my new color. For row six, we just start with a chain one, and I kind of like to lock my tails in when I do it, so here's my first chain going underneath my tails like that, and that gives me a nice neat edge. Now, the purpose of this row, row six, is that we're going to be evening out the top edge. So where it's short here, we're gonna be making taller stitches. And when it's where it's up high here, we're gonna be making shorter stitches. We're also going to work them in the back loops only to kind of push this top edge forward. So if you look at your stitch, every stitch has one loop that's closest to you, that is the front loop, and one loop that's farther away from you, and that is the back loop. So that's where we're gonna be working. So in the first stitch, I'm going to work two single crochets in the back loop only, okay? So there's one, two, okay? Then in the next stitch, I'm going to work one single crochet in the back loop only. Now I'm going to start making taller stitches to get this evened out, right? So the next stitch is going to be half double crochet, and again, I'm still in back loops. Then the next one is going to be double crochet, the next stitch is going to be half double crochet. Now we're back to doing three single crochets, but notice that in the center there we're going to have that chain space. When you work into the chain space, we're going to be working into the space like we normally would, not into the back loop of the chain. So that's important. We want to open up this space. So we're going to work into the chain space itself. So one single crochet goes in the back loop here, and then one single crochet is going down into this chain space. Okay, now we start with back loops again. One single crochet in this stitch, then a half double, then a double, then a half double. Okay, now we do these three single crochets again. So single crochet in the back loop, single crochet in the chain space, single crochet in the back loop. And one more time, half double, double, half double. And now we're down to our, oops, that's a half double, there we go. Now we're down to our last two stitches. So we single crochet in the next stitch, and then two single crochet, find the back loop on that chain, you totally can do it, there it is. Okay, two single crochet in that last stitch. And you can see how that's kind of pushed the whole edge forward and then tacked it down in those chain spaces, which I think is a really pretty look. 
So that is the end of the shell stitch section, which is going to set us up for the next section, which is the rice stitch section. Every row in this section is going to start and end with two half double crochets in the first stitch, two half double crochets in the last stitch. Now, if you prefer to chain two when you're making your half double crochets, you can do that. I prefer to chain one. It, it depends, you know, people have different preferences. So I am chaining one, turning my work, and I'm going to put two half double crochets in this first stitch. Now for this row, I'm just going to half double crochet in every stitch all the way across, and then I'll put two half double crochets in the last stitch. Here I am at my last stitch, and I put two half double crochets in that one. This is a great row to count your stitches on. You should have 23 stitches when you reach this point. For row eight, chain one and turn, and then two half double crochets in your first stitch. And now we're gonna start working with front and back post stitches. We're going to start on this row with a front post stitch around this second stitch here, okay? So we put two half double crochets in the first stitch. Now we do a front post double crochet around the second stitch and then a back post around the next one. And we're gonna keep alternating front post, back post all the way across. So front post, we go in from the front to the back and then all the way around and up to the front again. Okay, so that's a front post. You can see that the hook is sitting in front of the fabric and I'm just going to pull up a loop and then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, like a normal double crochet. For a back loop, we go the other way. So do your yarn over. Now you're gonna go from back to front and then out the back again. So now you can see that my hook is behind the fabric and that's a back loop or a back post double crochet. So yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, and we're going to alternate front post, back post, front post, back post till we get to the end of the row. Now I've just finished a back post. I have two stitches left. I'm gonna do a front post around the second to last stitch. And then in the last stitch, I'm gonna do my two half double crochets. So I've started and ended outside of these two half double crochets, started with a front post, ended with a front post on both ends there. Next row, we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna start with a back post. So I'm gonna chain one, turn, and do my two half double crochets for the edge. And now this first one, we're gonna go ahead and do a back post, uh, the second stitch. We're gonna go ahead and do a back post. Okay, Oop. it's a little fiddlier at the corner. There we go, back post. And now look where that leaves us for the pattern. This one, this stitch that we did last on the last row, we did a front post, but because we've turned our work, it's at the back, right? And that's where we're gonna do a front post now. So it's going to kind of pull these posts backwards and forwards the opposite of the way they're laying now. So if this one is in the back, I'm going to do a front post. And when it's in the front, I'm going to do a back post. And so I keep alternating like that, the opposite way of the way they're laying um, until I get to the end of the row. And then I do that one more back post at the end of the row. I have two stitches left. I do a back post around the second to last stitch. And then I do two half double crochets in the very last stitch, which is right here. There we go. So let's do this one more time. And on the next row, we're starting with the front post again. So chain one and turn. We're gonna do two half double crochets in the first stitch. And now starting with a front post around the second stitch, we're gonna do front post and then back post and see how now we're alternating again and going opposite where it's laying. So this is in the back, I do a front post this is laying in the front, I'm gonna do a back post. And I keep doing that all the way to the end. I've reached the last two stitches, so I'm gonna front post double crochet around this one. And then in the last one, I do two half doubles, but on my last half double, I'm gonna change color. So I'm not gonna finish with this stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my next color, and I'm gonna finish this last half double with the new color yarn. And 
that is the end of the rice stitch section. So now we're gonna move on to horizontal puffs. I went ahead and cut my color B yarn, and for the beginning of row 11, I'm going to chain one, and again, I like to trap these tails in there when I do it, and I'm gonna turn. And just like we did before, I'm gonna do two half double crochets into the first stitch. Now on this row, I'm still doing post stitches, but I'm going to be doing all of them as front post stitches because we're on the wrong side of the work and I wanna create a ridge on this side. So I'm gonna push the tops of the stitches forward on all these stitches by working front post stitches. So on the wrong side, front post stitches. So I've worked two stitches into my first stitch. Now I find my second stitch here and I'm gonna do a front post double crochet. And this is another great row to count on. By the time we're done, we should have four half double crochets in the corner and 27 front post double crochets. So one, all of them front post. Two, three, 24, 25, 26, oops, really 26. And that brings me to my last two stitches. So one more makes 27 front post double crochets and then two more half double crochets in that last stitch. Okay, now I'm ready to make puffs. So chain three, because this is a double crochet equivalent row. And you can see how this has created that nice little ridge and kind of pushed the tops of this forward. That's what I was going for with the rice stitch section. So let's move on to making these horizontal puffs. And these are basically puff stitches, just like this one we made down here, but this time we're gonna work around the posts of some double crochets. So we start with our first double crochet, which was that chain three, and then one more double crochet in that first stitch. We're gonna go ahead and do a double crochet in the second stitch as well. And now we're gonna start the horizontal puffs which are a multi-step thing. First, you do three double crochets. So one, two, my yarn's getting tight. There we go, three, three double crochets. Now we're gonna kind of turn our work a little bit, yarn over, and we're gonna do a puff around the posts of these three double crochets all together. So yarn over, insert your hook, this is as if you were doing a front post, so it goes from front to back and then back around the front again, right? I like to turn my work slightly. You can do it this way if it's more comfortable. Yarn over and pull up a loop, okay? Pull that up nice and big to the width of these all of these stitches because it's gonna go across that way, okay? Yarn over, do it again. Nice and big, nice and loose. Do it again, that's three. Do it again for four. And one more time for five yarn overs and pull up a loops. Okay, there we go. Now we have 11 loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all 11 and chain one to close. So you can see where it's exactly the same thing we did as a puff stitch, except we're doing it around the posts of these stitches so that it lies sideways. So we're gonna do that nine times total. That was one. So three double crochets. Okay, now turn your work slightly, yarn over, wrap around those three posts and pull up a loop, nice and big, yarn over, wrap around the three posts, pull up a loop, two, three, four, five, yarn over and pull through all 11 loops and chain one to close. Again, and I'll do this one a little faster. Three double crochets, yarn over, pull up a loop around the posts five times, two, three, four, five, yarn over and pull through and chain one to close. And I'm going to do that a total of nine times. That was three so far. I'll come back to you at the end of the row when I've done nine. I've done nine puffs, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That leaves me with two stitches at the end. I'm going to double crochet into the first of them and two double crochet into the last one. 
We're almost done with this triangle. The last thing to do is just basically to single crochet back across the top. But now let's look at these puff stitches, these horizontal puffs, to see where exactly we're going to put those single crochets. I've pulled these out so that you can see the, the actual posts of the stitches underneath the puff. You see one, two, three posts. Here are the three double crochets. One, two, three. All right. Then next to that, we have the actual stitch that closed out the puff. This is that last pull through. This is what that was. And then this is that final chain after it. So what I like to do when I'm working into this is I find out of those one, two, three, four, five stitches, I find the center three, which is the stitch that closed the puff, the actual puff itself, and then the first two of the double crochet stitches. So you're not working into that last double crochet and you're not working into that slip or that chain. If you prefer a different three, that's fine. You want to work into the three double crochets. That's cool too. Um, as long as you're consistent. However you work into one horizontal puff, work into the others the same way. So let's clean that puff back up a little bit. It's a little wonky, but it'll come out in blocking. Um, yeah, don't pull on your puffs quite that much. <laughs> it makes them a little wonky. Okay, so let's see how that works again. For this last row, I'm going to chain one. I'm going to do two single crochet in the first stitch to give me that corner increase. And then I'm going to single crochet in each of these two double crochets. And now I get to the puff. So I'm not going into that chain. I'm going here. One, two, and three. Okay, right in the center. See how those line up nice and neat in the center of the puff? And then I go in the next puff. And again, I'm not going in that chain. I'm going one, two, three, right in the center of the puff. And I keep doing that all the way across. Again, the only thing that really matters is that you get three stitches into each of these horizontal puffs and that you're doing the same thing on each one. So it's not, you know, all the way on this side on one, all the way on that side on the other. Okay, that leaves me with my last three stitches. I'm going to single crochet in two of them, and then I'm going to do a two single crochet increase here in the last one. And that is the end of my first triangle. So since it's my first triangle, I can go ahead and fasten this off. And if I wanted to, I could weave in ends. I'm probably going to wait till the end to do that. But this is the first triangle. I'm going to make another triangle just like this, and then we're going to come back and join them across the middle. I finished my second triangle, but now I'm not fastening off because I'm going to use this same yarn to join the two triangles together. So first, find your right and wrong side. This looks pretty, but this is actually the right side, okay? Where you see the edge of your shells and where you see this decorative ridge here. That's your right side. So find your two right sides and then put your pieces so that the wrong sides are together. We're going to work this seam on the right side of the fabric. So I've got my two wrong sides together and my right sides are out. Okay. Now what, all we're going to do is we're going to stitch through both layers together. So find that first stitch. There's the first stitch on this one. I'm going to chain one just to get some distance from it. There's the first stitch on this one, right there and right there, and the first stitch on the back one, right? So now going through both layers, I've already chained one. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to chain one and slip stitch in each stitch. So chain one, and then go through both layers, just like that, and slip stitch. Chain one, and slip stitch. And try not to make this too tight, because you don't want it to pucker. Leave it similar in, tension to the rest of the stitches so that it doesn't buckle too much and it doesn't pucker too much. And you just chain one and slip stitch all the way across. Slip stitch, chain one, and then there's my last stitch, which I do a slip stitch. Now that's left me off in the corner because when I open this up, I've got a square. Now you're going to want to take your fingers and kind of massage this seam flat just by pulling on the sides of it. It's only bunched up because that's the way we were holding the fabric. As soon as you pull it flat and when you wash and block it in particular, it will, it will flatten out. So you'll have a nice flat seam there. 
So now we have a square that's joined in the middle and we've left off at one of the corners. So I'm just gonna start right from this corner and start to work the edging. So the edging is going to have a chain space in the corner, but it's hard, how do you start a row with a chain space, right? So we're going to chain two and that's gonna count as a chain one space. It gives us the height and then gives us a chain one space. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put 25 stitches across each side of the square. So you can, if it's easier for you, divide the square up into five sections and kind of visually figure out, you know, five stitches here, five stitches here, five stitches here, five stitches here. Um, or you can just kind of wing it and see how it goes. <laughs> um, I'm going to try and wing it and just kind of get 25 stitches put in evenly all the way across. So one. So that's 13 and I want to be about halfway through my square, which is about right. 24 and then right in the beginning where I started this whole thing right here in the corner, 25. Okay, now I'm going to chain one for my corner, turn my work and do 25 on, not turn my work, rotate my work and do 25 on this side. And I'll keep doing that for each side all the way around. Now, as we come around to our beginning corner here, remember that when we started, we made a chain two and we said it counts as a chain one space. So to finish this round, I'm just going to slip stitch into that chain space to kind of open it up. And that puts me right in the corner chain space to start the next round. So now we've got the first round of our edging done. Let's go ahead and start the next round. Chain one. And now in the chain space, I'm gonna do a half double crochet, a chain one and a half double crochet all in that same starting chain space. Okay. Now I'm going to back post double crochet around every single stitch all the way around. Or I shouldn't say all the way around, all the way across to the next corner. Now I've reached the next corner and I'm again going to do half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet, and then I'm going to start back post double crochets all the way across to the next corner. And I'll keep doing that all the way around till I get back to the beginning. Now when I come back to this corner, I'm going to join with a slip stitch in my first stitch and then I'm just going to fasten off. Now I want to change color for the next round and I can join this color in any corner. So I'm going to pick a different corner just so that all my ends aren't in the same spot. Now I do want to mention something about if you decide to change colors differently than I'm doing or if you decide to do this all in one color. When we finished this round, we fastened off and then we joined wherever we wanted to in a corner, right? If you're doing this, the current round in the same color, as the previous round, you don't have to fasten off. You join here and then you just slip stitch into the chain one space and go ahead and start your next round. So you don't absolutely have to fasten off and then rejoin and have those extra ends. You can just slip stitch over to the chain one space and then start the next round from there. Now for round three, I'm going to do two single crochets, chain one, and then two single crochets all in this corner space. Now I'm going to single crochet in the next three stitches. And when you're working in rounds like this without turning, it's very, very easy to miss this first stitch because this is not the loop for this first stitch. This is the loop for this first stitch because we haven't turned our work. So the loops on the, on the right hand side, it's, it's before the post instead of after the post like, like it is when we turn our work. So make sure you get into this first stitch here and we're going to single crochet in one, two, three stitches, okay? Then we're gonna come down and look for the stitch directly below the next one. And you see how the top of the stitch is still exposed because we didn't work into it? We're going to do a double crochet into that stitch, into the top of that stitch that's sticking out there. So in front of this stitch that's here. Then we do three single crochets. And then again, we're gonna come down and do a double crochet into this stitch here, just like this. Do 
just like that. Okay, and we're going to keep doing that all the way across, three single crochets. And then you can count down here to make sure you're skipping three on the bottom. And there we go, double crochet. And as I get to this end, this is where I joined, so it's a little bit wonky. So you have to really carefully look at what you're, what you're working into here. Here's one, two. This is where my join was. This was the first, the last single crochet before I hit that chain space. So right there is where I need to go for my last stitch. Now I've got the chain space here. So I do my two single, yeah, two single crochets, chain one, two single crochets. And then remember, don't skip that first stitch. It hides in there. Go one, two, three. And then we're going to do the double crochets again and we're going to keep doing this pattern all the way around of three single crochets and then one double crochet in the row below this next stitch. Now when I get to the end of the round I just slip stitch into the first stitch I made to join it. Now I'm going to be changing colors again so I'm going to fasten off and then join the new color in any chain space. If you're not changing colors, like I said before, you can just slip stitch your way over to the chain space. So slip stitch in the next stitch in this case, and then slip stitch into that chain space. And now you could start from here with, um, with your next round. But I am not doing that. I am finishing right here and switching colors. The next round is basically a repeat of this second round that we did, where again I'm going to be doing the back post stitches to kind of push these ones forward. So I join in the corner, find that corner chain space and join. And then I'm going to do the same exact thing I did there. So half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet. All right. And then starting from here, I'm just going to back post double crochet around all of the stitches to the next corner. There's one. Now when I reach the corner space, I go ahead and do my half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the corner and then I start continuing around the next side with my back post double crochets. And I'm going to keep doing that all the way around. When I get to the end, I'm just going to slip stitch in my first stitch and then I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch into that chain one space to start the next round. Now the next round is just half double crochet all the way around. If your square is already as big as you want it, you can entirely skip the next round. If your square is a little too small, you can work the next round twice. It works to adjust the size either way that you need it. So for this last round, all we're going to do is half double crochet all the way around. In the corners, we're going to do the half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet corner that we've been doing. And then it's just, don't forget that first stitch, and then just half double crochet in each stitch all the way around, um, and then in each corner, do that half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet. I've reached the next corner, so a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet in the corner, and then half double crochet in each stitch all the way across to the next corner. I'm back around to the beginning, so I join with a slip stitch to my first stitch, and I can fasten off because my square is done. All that's left to do now is to weave in my tails and give it a good wash and block so it lays nice and flat, and that's it. That's how you make the Convergence 12 inch crochet square. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share it with your friends, or leave me a comment. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos. Thanks for watching!